Hello, it's Bobby, aka Paginator, and we're here today with the March TBR game. <music> Filming this on the same day that I'm wrapping up a vlog and shopping kind of haul thing, so there's some books that I might be talking about more than once, depending on how this game goes, because um, I might be pulling some of those books that I recently bought. So. Let's get into the rolls and hope everything goes well. Here we go with roll number one. Two. Crap, which way do I go down? Down. One, two. Sneak peek. All right, roll number one got a sneak peek where I have to look at someone else's TBR. And uh, Gavin, Gavin reads it all, um, just posted a spring TBR. And the first book that he was speaking about is A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed, which I happen to have a copy of. So I thought, okay, here it goes. Um, let's read what this book is about. Effie Sayre has always believed in fairy tales. She's had no choice. Since childhood, she's been haunted by visions of the fairy king. She's found solace only in the pages of Angerad, Emery Smirden's beloved epic about a mortal girl who falls in love with the fairy king and then destroys him. Effie's tattered copy is all that's keeping her afloat through her first term at the prestigious Lyrian Architecture College. So when Myrdian's family announces a contest to redesign the late author's estate, Effie feels certain this is her destiny. But Hiriath Manor is an impossible task, a musty, decrepit house on the brink of crumbling into a hungry sea. And when Effie arrives, someone else has already made a, a temporary home there. Preston Ellery, a stodgy young literature scholar, is determined to prove Effie's favorite author is a fraud. As the two rival students investigate the reclusive author's legacy, piecing together clues through his letters, books, and diaries, they discover that the house's foundation isn't the only thing that can't be trusted. There are dark forces, both mortal and magical, conspiring against them, and the truth may bring them both to ruin. Rule number two. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pick a card. I just realized the dice was mostly out frame there. Sorry, you can see that it is a six. Okay, shuffling the cards. Let's pick something good, please. Ozai, book with a red cover. Rule number two, Goddess Ozai, book with a red cover. And for this one, I am going to read Scarlet Alchemist. This is by Kylie Lee Baker, and it has this beautiful special edition. Scarlet is in the title, which is the shade of red, you know, and we've got red all over the place. So this says, the principal rule of alchemy, you cannot create good without also creating evil. Silent dreams of becoming a royal alchemist, escaping her impoverished village in southern China to make alchemical gold for the wealthy, so they can stay young forever. But for now, she scrapes a living, practicing an illegal form of alchemy, resurrecting the dead for a price. Then Zylan is offered a chance to travel to the capital and complete the imperial exams, facing a series of dangerous tasks that she'll be lucky to survive, let alone pass. The closer Zylan gets to her goal, the more she is caught in the deadly games of the royal family, especially when the crown prince seeks her help, suspecting a coming assassination attempt. There are monsters lurking within the palace walls, and it's only a matter of time before they and the secrets of Zylan's past catch up with her. Roll number three. One. Flower. So this means I can use one book for two prompts this month. However, I still need a prompt, so we're going to draw a card. Unagi. Salmon skin roll. <laughs> I have to say that every time. I'm so sorry. No, Unagi means a book that has both a U and an I in the title. Roll number three, guys. Unagi. Uh, unagi. <laughs> um... I've really been wanting to rewatch Friends. <coughs> Excuse me, I've been listening to Matthew Perry's memoir and like just thinking about that show a lot. So when this Unagi came up, up I was like, oh, yes, I really need to watch that show. Anyway, um, this requires a book with a U and an I, the letters U and I in the title, and I'm going to read Stunt Boy in Between Time. I got this copy. It's actually signed by Jason Reynolds. Um, I got to meet Jason Reynolds. And he was amazing and wonderful and oh my gosh. But I never just like sat down and read this book, which is sad. It's a graphic novel. It would probably take me like, what, an hour or something to read. So we're going to read this one. It is a sequel. In the first one, we um, 
meet Stunt Boy, who is an ordinary kid, but also a superhero, and he's trying to use his superhero abilities to deal with the fact that his parents are getting divorced in the first one. And then the second one, I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. He's going to have his super friend Zola and Herbert um, with him, and what does it look like? Maybe they need to save iguanas, trick some bullies, and uh, not have to deal with... Uh, with uh, his thing called the frets, which is his anxiety. He's hoping to avoid that. So we'll see how it goes in the second one. Roll number four. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Dragon something? What does that mean? I forgot. Crap. Okay, I think it's dragon dancing, which means to read a book digitally, either Kindle or otherwise. So I'm going to say audiobooks count as that as well. Rule number four, goddess, dancing dragon, read a book digitally. And I have an audiobook um, through NetGalley that I need to listen to and review. It is Under This Red Rock by Minnie McGinnis. And Under this red rock. Ooh, I meant to click on it so I could, I could read the little McGinnis. synopsis. And it's starting to play. No, that's not what I want. All right, here's the so synopsis from Goodreads. Neely's monsters don't always follow her rules, so when the little girl under her bed, the man in her closet, and the disembodied voice that shadows her every move become louder, she knows she's in trouble. With a history of mental illness in her family and the suicide of her older brother heavy on her mind, Neely takes a job as a tour guide in the one place her monsters can't follow, the caverns. There she can find peace. There she can pretend to be normal. There she meets Mila. Mila is everything Neely isn't, beautiful, strong, and confident. As the two become closer, Neely's innocent crush grows into something more. When a midnight staff party exposes Neely to drugs, she follows Mila's lead only to save her have her hallucinations escalate. When Mila is found brutally murdered in the caverns, Neely has to admit that her memories of that night are vague at best. With her monsters now out in the open and her grip on reality slipping, Neely must figure out who killed Mila and face the possibility that it might have been her. Minnie McGinnis is going to hit hard with those young adult, like, so Minnie McGinnis is not an author that I ever recommend my middle schoolers to read. I mean, from the content of that um, little blurb, you can probably tell why. But um, if I have, like, high schoolers who are looking for recommendations that are, you know, more advanced, like, in maturity level kids or just, you know, other adults, I will recommend her books because she is a good writer. It's just very, very deep into the edgy stuff. Roll number five. Four. One, two, three, four. Pick a card. Bato. Author's name begins with either an A or a B. Rule number nine got us Bato. Author's name begins with A or B. And, and I have this book here, which you're going to see in an upcoming video, which I've already filmed. How does that work? Anyway, time's a weird thing. This is The World's Famous Nine by Ben Gutterson. It is a middle grade book. It is about Xander. Um, her, Xander's grandmother is the owner of this fabled number nine plaza, this building that's 19 stories. Um, it has all kinds of crazy things. Ferris wheel on the top. It has monorail tracks suspended from the ceiling, 25 glass elevators. It's like this legendary building, but strange accidents start befalling the guests there. And so Xander and his friend Natasha come across a series of inscriptions hidden throughout the walls of the nine. They discover that the clues will lead them to a magical object which protects the store's very existence. With the future of the Nine on the line, the pair are determined to recover the mysterious object before the Luxury Plaza and its many guests are destroyed. So, we'll see how that one goes. Roll number six. Six. Weird. One, two, three, four, five, six. Burnout. I think that means I have to slow down the... What does that mean? So that means that every spin is halved. Um, I could draw a card for a prompt in this, but I think I'm just going to roll again for roll number six and half the rolls and stuff. I think you round down, so like if I rolled a five, half of that would be two and a half, so I'd round down to two, and so on. Okay, so I get to move three spaces. One, two, three. No, I'm supposed to go this way. One, two, three. Pick a card. Ember Island. Friend picks your next read. Number six, Ember Island is a friend pick. Um, I had my friend Andrea choose from three books. 
and she chose for me to read Rosewood, which is another new purchase. Cyan Tani Dasgupta is the author. This is a Sense and Sensibility retelling with a hint of like um, Regency era reality TV, if that makes any sense. Um, so Ayla Das is the sensible older sister. Um, she's holding everything together after the death of their father and her younger sister Malika is the one that's like she needs to be protected by Ayla, I guess. Um, and there's going to be this thing called Regency Camp, hosted by the producers of Rosewood. Um, she is, it's like a murder mystery Regency drama, and so it's kind of like, I guess not reality TV, TV, just TV. I did say reality TV a minute ago. I didn't mean that. I just meant TV. <laughs> anyway, um, she's got a chance to potentially be in this show um, as an actress. And then we have this other character, Rahul Lee. Um, who loves Shakespeare and Austin. I think he and I would get along well. <laughs> um, and he brings out Ayla's fun-loving side, and they kind of spark a thing, and she's thinking maybe she shouldn't quite yet give up on acting. Maybe this could be something she could really do, and she's catching feelings for Rahul. Um, so we have, you know, all the elements of um, sense and sensibility, two sisters, one very sensible, one very much led by her heart, and uh, the sensible sister is going to have to learn how to give over to her emotions in order to get the love of her life. Um, at least that's what happens in the original, so I'm guessing that's what's going to have to happen here. But again, that's Rosewood. It looks super cute, and it's not that very long. How many pages is it exactly? 306. Roll number seven, three, so I think I can only move one forward, the eclipse, which means I have to slide back here and then go back three. So we're moving this way, one, two, three, cabbage pot. Holy cow. For roll number seven, we got cabbage pot. So I've got my skull here. I have a larger thing that I have drawn from the past, a top hat, and I need to update the books in there, and this one's more updated, so I'm going to draw from this one, and we have Dear Medusa. Oh, good. I've been wanting to read this book for a while. So this is a verse novel. I learned about it at the um, Books for Young Adults um, training that I go to every year, and this is by Olivia A. Cole. We will read the synopsis. 16-year-old Alicia Rivers has a reputation that precedes her, but there's more to her story than the whispers that follow her through the hallways at school. Whispers that splinter into a million different insults that really mean a girl who has had sex. But what her classmates don't know is that Alicia was sexually abused by a popular teacher, and the trauma has rewritten every cell in her body, turning her into someone she doesn't recognize. Now, I will, will pause here to say that if this triggers me, like, in any way, I'm going to stop reading it. Um, I have heard that it's really well done, and sometimes I can handle this kind of stuff in a book, sometimes I can't. Um, it just depends. Like, Exit Pursuit by a Bear it's supposed to be this phenomenal book, and I couldn't handle it. Like, the sexual abuse in there was just too much for me. I, it couldn't happen. And this one's involving a teacher, which is going to make it worse, because myself being a teacher, I despise despise teachers who do this shit. It's like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to swear. Um, <laughs> it, it just makes me so angry. And yeah, anyway, let's continue with the synopsis. Um, to the world around her, she's been cast like the mythical Medusa as not the victim, but the monster of her own story, the slut who asked for it. Alicia was abandoned by her best friend, quit the track team, and now spends her days in detention, feeling isolated and invisible. When mysterious letters left in her locker hint at another victim, Alicia struggles to keep up the walls she's built around her trauma. At the same time, her growing attraction to a new girl in school makes her question what those walls are keeping out. In this intimate and seemingly gorgeous novel and verse, Alicia must decide if she's ready to reclaim her story, her anger, and her body in a world that seems determined to punish her for the sin of surviving. So it's going to be a heavy one, but hopefully very good. Roll number eight, three, and I can only move one, one, pick a card. Oh, I need to turn them this way so I can't see. <laughs> My, read a book with a four or higher Goodreads reading. Okay. Roll number eight got us my, a book with four or higher in Goodreads. 
So I was scrolling through my want to read list in Goodreads and I sorted it by rating and I was looking at the ones that were rated for or higher and I realized I haven't read this yet. Warrior Girls Unearthed by Angeline Bowie. I absolutely loved Firekeeper's Daughter, which was her debut novel. And I have, um, consequently, high expectations for her next one. So, I can't remember the exact rating it has, but it's like 4.4 or 4.5 maybe or something. Anyway, let's read the synopsis. Perry Firekeeper Birch has always known who she is, the laid-back twin, the troublemaker, the best fisher on Sugar Island. Her aspirations won't ever take her far from home, and she wouldn't have it any other way. But as the already striking number of missing indigenous women continues to rise, as her family becomes embroiled in a high-profile murder investigation, and as greedy grave robbers seek to profit off of what belongs to her Ashkin Ash... Ashinabe tribe? I almost said Ashkenazi, but is that something else? <laughs> Ashinabe. Perry begins to question everything. In order to reclaim this inheritance for her people, Perry has no choice but to take matters into her own hands. She can only count on her friends and allies, including her overachieving twin and a charming new boy in town with unwavering morals. Old rivalries, rivalries sister secrets, and botched heist cannot, will not stop her from uncovering the mystery before the ancestors and missing women are lost forever. Roll number nine, two, which means again only roll one. And this is the element arrows, so I have to do either a roll or a random number generator or something to coincide with the elements. So you can see here on G's instructions, we have air, fire, water, earth. So let's just roll right now with the dice. We'll go one, two, three, four, and then anything I get that's not one of those numbers, I'll have to re-roll. Five, oh, six, six, four. Four is earth, which means I have to read a contemporary. Roll number nine got us the element triangles. We got earth, which means contemporary. And this is going to be another new one from the hall that I already filmed, but you'll see later. <laughs> and this is um, Riley Weaver needs a date to the gay butant ball. Riley is a femme gay teen podcaster, and he's a junior in high school. He wants to apply for membership to the Gay Butant Society, which is like an organization that uh, for LGBTQ plus teens that help launch their careers and that kind of thing. And um, to try to get into the society, you have to go through this process of like parties, charity events, culminating in this Gay Butant Ball. And he, um, Riley overhears the superstar athlete Skylar say, gay guys just aren't interested in femme guys or else they wouldn't be gay, which doesn't make any sense, but you know, whatever. Um, and Riley confronts him and makes a bet to prove him wrong. Riley has to find a masculine date, um, for the gay butant ball or he'll drop out of the society entirely. So he's going to try to find that. Um, and this just seems like something like fun, like some good old gay times fun. Maybe I should be saving this for Pride Month, but I want to read it now. Okay, so roll number 10. One. Which means I go here and land on minus three again. One, two, three, back to Cabbage Pot. Great. Roll number 10 got us uh, Cabbage Pot again. So here is our skull one more time. And... Oh boy, Iron Flame, which is a chunky one, but I don't mind because I'm excited to go back to that world already. I read Fourth Wing and loved it, so yay, more dragons for me. So this is a sequel. I'll tell you a little bit about the first one. Um, as if you don't already know, I mean, probably everybody's read Fourth Wing by now, but we have Violet and Zayden who are attending this academy which trains dragon riders and... There's a hate to love romance. There's dragons. What more do you need to know? Just go read it. Um, insider information also. I found an audiobook version of Fourth Wing on YouTube. So if you're looking for the audiobook, see if that video is still up. Okay. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, here is my giant stack for March. I did not finish all of my February ones. I've got a few more days in February and I know I'm not going to finish the whole thing. So, oops, we'll see if we can do better in March. 
Um, but that's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you've read any of these books in below and if you enjoyed them. But as always, please, no spoilers. Be kind. And uh, have a wonderful, magical, and bookish day. Happy reading. Adios.